Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Uh, just a few days ago I published a video about the Dwarf 2 and the firmware update and at the time I wasn't able to uh, provide uh, like the actual images of what had been enhanced with the Dwarf. So I want to remedy that today by quickly showing you how the firmware upgrade on the Dwarf is really making things a bit easier than before. Okay, I am connected to the telescope on my smartphone and I am just going to go in the astro mode to do the calibration as I did before. And it's interesting, the first thing it does when doing the calibration is now it, like, it goes kind of like to the limits of the telescope, I think to the hard stop there, to kind of try to figure out where it is, I believe. And so this is likely what is being used in GoTo. And now it's going to take its calibration exposures as it did before. I am completely out of focus. This is beautiful. Come on, little camera, you can do it. Nope. Nope, the camera cannot, <laughs> cannot do it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to wait for the, the calibration to be over. Oh, 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 yes, the focus is back. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with a video. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Uh, we have a lot of clouds, so hopefully the calibration will work properly. We're no longer back. Ooh, ooh la la! So many, so much trouble with that, uh, with that exposure today. Okay, we are apparently calibrated at least, which is a good thing, and we're back in focus with the calibration. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think this video will jump in and out of focus all the time, so better get used to it. <laughs> Okay, uh, so since we are calibrated, now I can do a first go-to and I'm intentionally... Oh my word, this... Come on, I need, to, I need to fix this. Okay, I think we're more or less back in focus. Anyway, uh, first things first, let's try to slew to a planet. So we're going to go O2 go to and Jupiter. And okay, <laughs> as you can see on my screen, Jupiter is centered. We can see uh, three moons. But like one of the reasons that I don't think like the telescope is great for uh, planetary and that's doing the go-to tracking is that if I uh, zoom in here, like the quality of the optics simply isn't good enough for planetary, at least in my opinion. So that's where uh, I'm like, okay, I don't really want to try planetary on the, uh, on the telescope. I think the moon can probably give give us uh, some uh, some better information. So let's try to go to the moon. And yeah, it's there. So now it's going to try to plate solve on the moon, but the moon is like super bright, so I'm sure that it will fail to place plate solve miserably. Uh, so that could be something else to try and you know and improve as well. Like maybe when you salute the moon, you don't need to plate solve. Um, yeah, we're on the moon at least, kind of. Uh, so I think there are limitations that go to, but I think the moon is probably like, you know, big enough to see. Can I can I change the uh, the gain? And the exposure time, so we can actually see the moon to some extent. Nice. It's a red moon because of the IR cut filter or path, pass filter. Let's try to cut. And now we have a normal color moon, guys. Isn't that beautiful? Can I autofocus on the moon? Hey, yes, it worked. It autofocused on the moon. Yeah, well, okay, that's uh, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, maybe I should uh, take a quick video of that. Okay, I'm just gonna take like a... Ooh, oh, you're... you're... Suddenly it started tracking the go-to. Now that is interesting. Okay, but at least we, we see the moon. The moon could be go-to too. <laughs> what am I saying? Okay, and we took a short video and I'm also going to take a picture of the moon because why not? Aha, we took a picture. Okay, let's go back to, uh, <laughs> to real astrophotography. I'm just kidding, of course. Uh, so I'm gonna hide the wide angle lens, by the way. Uh, I am going to enable the pass filter again. I'm going to put back the, the gain to 80 and the exposures to one second just so that we can do the, the next text test. Okay, so we've tested the go to to the planet. It seems to be working pretty well. Although the moon, it had some issues at first. I, I think it's uh, 
kind of normal, but uh, it could be better. Now I'm going to go to intentionally to something that is not quite visible from my balcony yet, um, to show that the issue that I had with GoTo's um, is kind of fixed now, hopefully. So now I'm going to M42, and M42 is, uh, is like, you know, not gonna work. We're not gonna be able to play it solve because I'm like, uh, um, you're looking at my door, uh, that is very uh, with, that is eliminated, so we don't see anything. The uh, the go to is failing miserably, and so we can try to go somewhere else, like the Andromeda uh, Galaxy. And yeah, it's go to tracking, but uh, it's not going to work. Little telescope, we're going to try to go to the Andromeda Galaxy, and this time, last time it would have been completely lost. This time. It is indeed trying to, uh, and it has the galaxy, it's kind of like under clouds, but we can see kind of to the right of the center, the M31 galaxy is there, and it has centered it properly. So that's a big, big uh, step forward for the telescope. And I am going to put my um, exposure time to 10 seconds. There we are, we are. and I'm going to go inside my uh, feature and we're going to take like, I don't know, I'm going to, we're not going to take all of the exposure, but let's say 33 exposures, so I can see, show you the unlinked stretch. So uh, on a very, sp very standard target, which I showed last time, and with the clouds streaming through, so it's really not the best uh, situation. But you'll see what happens once we get two frames stacked with basically unlinked stretch. Okay, we're almost hopefully having stacked two frames. Hopefully the clouds will allow the stacking to happen. And yes, and now, last time when you were watching this, you were seeing like a very red image. I was seeing a very red image. Have I... I'm going to stop it for a second because I, I, I forgot if I uh, re-enabled the IR pass filter. But you can see this was completely red. It's no longer completely red. However, as you can see, it goes back to like the wrong settings once it uh, it finishes the um, uh, the stacking. So I'm going to go back again. So it, it's back to the correct one second exposure um, settings. Okay, and let's double check. Yes, I was IR pass. So you can see even with my IR pass, which should make the air, the image very red. Just one second ago, you were seeing that the. Uh, the, the image was really having a proper unlinked stretch, which is, honestly, it makes a massive, massive difference. Okay, I'm gonna be back at 10 seconds. We're gonna try this again. And I want to see like with just five minutes of data, you know, how, how well can I see with just live stacking, so electronically assisted astronomy, um, how, how it happens. I haven't taken darks. Um, so it's uh, we're gonna see it's gonna be very interesting because you can actually see the walking noise going as a field rotation kind of thing okay and now this is with fewer clouds we're starting to get like some really good um, stacking with just 20 seconds right uh, but like what used to be uh, the last time that I showed you this uh, super red is no longer red we have a proper unlinked stretch done which means that all of the RG and B channels are aligned together rather than allow allowing one channel to overwhelm the two others uh, like we had with red before and we are at four minutes already of um, of stacking, we can see the, <laughs> the the galaxy. We can also see the the hot pixels, kind of describing the field rotation. But more than that, we can actually see some details in the galaxy with the proper unlinked stretch. I also have uh, my light on there, so it, we're really not in the best conditions. And I can still play with the with the histogram to kind of uh, increase the contrast as I want, uh, as long as I don't mess it, mess it up completely. Yep, we can see the Andromeda Galaxy pretty uh, pretty well for just four minutes from Tokyo, and this is like just the live stacking. Uh, I could take like Astro Darks with the menu on the top right uh, there, although it only applies if I take 15 second exposures. For now, I've taken 10 second exposures. 
Um, but you can see we've looked at the uh, new features in the firmware and you can see why I was so excited because this unlinked stretch in particular makes a huge difference and also the ease of use of the telescope is um, is much higher than it, it used to be. There's still some things to be ironed out like the moment that we get to all uh, 33 exposures stacked the, this image will disappear. It will be available from the album so I'll be able to uh, to access it from the album but you know we'll be back to the weird settings uh, for, for Astro until I perform another go-to. And here we are I think we've uh, done with the stacking and BOOM! <laughs> it's gone. So we, we can still access it via the album which likely should be this one hopefully it's going to be uh, actually visible yes there it is so it, it is still accessible but I don't have access to the histogram directly anymore in this view right so that's still like something that ideally should be ironed out either you keep the image displayed or you you have the histogram available in the uh, in the album um, but yeah I mean big enhancements in the in the firmware and uh, it, it really bodes well for the future in terms of uh, of this little telescope which again it has tons of limitations, right? But for the price and the portability, it fills a niche. And while a lot of people may not need, you know, a telescope for this niche, I think a lot of other people kind of uh, want to have uh, such a, a nice to toy slash, to some extent, tool to uh, to play with. My next uh, video with the dwarf is really, I hope, to go to a dark zone with it. Currently, my car is being repa repaired, so that's going to take a bit of time. So probably like in mid-January, hopefully, for during the next, uh, uh, when the moon uh, starts uh, not being full. <laughs> anymore I don't remember when it's going to be in uh, January but uh, I'll travel to a darker spot to really put this uh, this telescope through its spaces um, in uh, a, a darker zone which for me means portal four or five uh, with that thank you so much for uh, for watching uh, don't forget whenever you can to uh, look up at the stars and I'll see you next time